Hi, Miss Erin here from the Tucker Free Library, and we have been reading My Father's Dragon by Ruth Stiles Gannett. We've been following Elmer as he's been journeying on Wild Island in search of a dragon that he would like to set free. He's encountered all sorts of wild animals and had to find ways to solve their problems so that he could get away to continue his journey. And the last animal that stood in his path was a giant gorilla who had lots of fleas and Elmer solved his problem by having magnifying glasses that in his knapsack that he gave to monkeys who were helping to search for the fleas to help the gorilla not be so itchy. So now we are going to read chapter nine, My Father Makes a Bridge. My father walked back and forth along the bank trying to think of some way to cross the river. He found a high flagpole with a rope going over to the other side. The rope went through a loop at the top of the pole and then down the pole and around a large crank. A sign on the crank said, to summon dragon, yank the crank, report disorderly conduct to gorilla. From what the cat had told my father, he knew that the other end of the rope was tied around the dragon's neck, and he felt sorrier than ever for the poor dragon. If he were on this side, the gorilla would twist his wings until it hurt so much that he'd have to fly to the other side. If he were on the other side, the gorilla would crank the rope until the dragon would either choke to death or fly back to this side. What a life for a baby dragon. My father knew that if he called to the dragon to come across the river, the gorilla would surely hear him. So he thought about climbing the pole and going across the rope. The pole was very high, and even if he could get to the top without being seen, he'd have to go all the way across, hand over hand. The river was very muddy, and all sorts of unfriendly things might live in it, but my father could think of no other way to get across. He was about to start up the pole when, despite all the noise the monkeys were making, he heard a loud splash behind him. He looked all around in the water, but it was dusk now and he couldn't see anything there. It's me, crocodile, said a voice to the left. The water's lovely and I have such a craving for something sweet. Won't you come in for a swim? A pale moon came out from behind the clouds and my father could see where the voice was coming from. The crocodile's head was just peeping out of the water. Oh, no thank you, said my father. I never swim after sundown, but I do have something sweet to offer you. Perhaps you'd like a lollipop and perhaps you have friends who would like lollipops too. Lollipop, said the crocodile. Why, that is a treat. How about it, boys? A whole chorus of voices shouted, Hooray, lollipops! And my father counted as many as 17 crocodiles with their heads just peeping out of the water. That's fine, said my father as he got out the two dozen pink lollipops and the rubber bands. I'll stick one here in the bank. Lollipops last longer if you keep them out of the water, you know. Now one of you can have this one. The crocodile who had first spoken swam up and tasted it. Delicious, mighty delicious, he said. See the crocodiles coming up? Now, if you don't mind, said my father, I'll just walk along your back and fasten another lollipop to the tip of your tail with a rubber band. You don't mind, do you? Oh no, not in the least, said the crocodile. Can you get your tail out of the water just a bit, asked my father. Yes, of course, said the crocodile, and he lifted up his tail. 
Then my father ran along his back and fastened another lollipop with a rubber band. Who's next? said my father, and the second crocodile swam up and began sucking on that lollipop. Now, you gentlemen can save a lot of time if you just line up across the river, said my father, and I'll be along to give you each a lollipop. So the crocodiles lined up right across the river with their tails in the air, waiting for my father to fasten on the rest of the lollipops. The tail of the 17th dragon, of the 17th crocodile, just reached the other bank. Chapter 10, My Father Finds the Dragon. When my father was crossing the back of the 15th crocodile with two more lollipops to go, the noise of the monkey suddenly stopped and he could hear a much bigger noise getting louder every second. Then he could hear seven furious tigers and one raging rhinoceros and two seething lions and one ranting gorilla along with countless screeching monkeys led by two extremely irate wild boars all yelling, it's a trick, it's a trick. There's an invasion and it must be after our dragon. Kill it, kill it. The whole crowd stampeded down to the bank. As my father was fixing the 17th lollipop for the last crocodile, he heard a wild boar scream. Look, it came this way. It's over there now. See, the crocodiles made a bridge for it. And just as my father leapt onto the other bank, one of the wild boars jumped onto the back of the first crocodile. My father didn't have a moment to spare. Look what he found on the other side. By now the dragon realized that my father was coming to rescue him. He ran out of the bushes and jumped up and down yelling, here I am, here I am, I'm here, can you see me? Hurry, the boar is coming over on the crocodiles too. They're all coming over. Oh, please hurry, hurry. The noise was simply terrific. My father ran up to the dragon and took out his very sharp jackknife. Steady, old boy, steady. We'll make it just stand still, he told the dragon as he began to saw through the big rope. By this time, both boars, all seven tigers, the two lions, the rhinoceros, and the gorilla, along with the countless screeching monkeys, were all on their way across the crocodiles, and there was still a lot of rope to cut through. Oh, hurry, the dragon kept saying, and my father again told him to stand still. If I don't think I can make it, said my father, we'll fly over to the other side of the river and I can finish cutting the rope there. Suddenly, the screaming grew louder and madder and my father thought the animals must have crossed the river. He looked around and saw something which surprised and delighted him, partly because he had finished his lollipop and partly because, as I told you before, Crocodiles are very moody and not the least bit dependable and are always looking for something to eat. The first crocodile had turned away from the bank and started swimming down the river. The second crocodile hadn't finished his lollipop yet. Um, he was still sucking it, but he followed right behind the first. All the rest did the same thing, one right after the other, until they were all swimming away in a line. The two wild boars, the seven tigers, the rhinoceros, the two lions, the gorilla, along with the countless screeching monkeys were all riding down the middle of the river on the train of crocodiles sucking pink lollipops and all yelling and screaming and getting their feet wet. Quite a sight, quite a sight. My father and the dragon laughed themselves weak because it was such a silly sight. As soon as they had recovered, my father finished cutting the rope and the dragon raced around in circles and tried to turn a somersault. He was the most excited baby dragon that ever lived. My father was in a hurry to fly away. And when the dragon finally calmed down a bit, my father climbed up onto his back. All aboard, said the dragon. Where shall we go? We'll spend the night on the beach and tomorrow we'll start on the long journey home. 
So it's off to the shores of Tangerina, shouted my father as the dragon soared above the dark jungle and the muddy river and all the animals bellowing at them and all the crocodiles licking pink lollipops and grinning wide grins. After all, what did the crocodiles care about a way to cross the river and what a fine feast they were carrying on their backs. As my father and the dragon passed over the ocean rocks, they heard a tiny excited voice scream, Bum cack, bum cack, we need our naked, I mean, we need our dragon. But my father and the dragon knew that nothing in the world would ever make them go back to Wild Island. The end. And there's Elmer getting to fly on the back of the dragon. So thanks so much for listening to My Father's Dragon.